OK, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go through this notebook on vertical axis wind turbine design. Uh, even if it's not directly related to what you work on, I think it may be useful for learning some tricks about implicit modeling, um, about bringing in different kinds of geometric information and manipulating it uh, with some of our modeling tools that are um, maybe familiar to you from CAD design, but have a little bit of different flavors to them uh, using and topology. And, um, you know, this is just a good example of like a parametric design. Uh, so even if you're not making wind turbines, we can discuss how, you know, the key inputs of a design can be put up front into the inputs of a notebook and it's easily uh, changeable. Um, for someone that doesn't want to go in and learn all of this, they can just use the inputs and adjust those. So that's the idea of this, you know, parametric design. Um, I have this paper that I based a lot of this on. It's an open source paper on the uh, different architectures of small vertical axis wind turbines. A little bit about wind turbines um, or vertical axis wind turbines is that they're, you know, they generate less power uh, in general than um, horizontal axis, but they're they're reliable and you know for small projects it's it's very useful to use them. Um, they uh, they don't require as much maintenance or and they're they're uh, not as hard to to set up. Um, and there's there's kind of four major designs. I'm, I'm really going to breeze through this paper. I don't want to get too into it. I just wanted to get an idea of of the different design considerations. Uh, so the four I looked at were, were here. And um, the first three are just kind of different variations of how you want to array the fins. Um, and they all have different implications in terms of efficiency and, and structural integrity. Um, but one problem that all of these three share is that as, you, uh, as the turbine is rotated and the wind is coming from one direction, the power generated is going to fluctuate. Um, because you'll have the fin perfectly aligned with the wind and it'll create more power and then it'll come around and it'll create less power, right? Less torque, therefore less power. So, <clears throat> so there, that's a problem in some cases, you need a steady flow of electricity and some electrical engineering applications. Uh, and the um, design uh, D here, which was not invented until the mid nineties, uh, actually rotates the blades. Um, it's hard to tell from this picture, but the, the airfoil blades are rotating as you uh, travel up this helix. And therefore at, at one point you always have a portion of the blade that's facing perpendicular to the, the wind. Um, and so that kind of geometry is pretty tricky. Like, like I'm sure these are you know hand-drawn and then in CAD it would be kind of annoying um, to go through and create all of them. Uh, but, but in NTOP, we can create all of these and do things like that, that uh, rotation of the air blade um, really easily. So, so I'm going to go through that in NTOP. Um, and if we time it, have time at the end, I'm going to show how uh, this can be meshed and put into an FE model uh, that um, will go into Fluent, uh, as you can see here. We brought this into Fluent so we can do CFD and stuff. Um, but uh, with that, I'm going to just check for questions. I think we're OK. Um, if you do have questions, you can drop them in the chat, chat or the q and I'll probably get to them not till the end, because uh, this is a fairly short video. Um, but yeah, let's start going through uh, some, some things in this file. So. The first thing we do is bring in a 2D profile of the airfoil. And um, this is actually coming in from, uh, there's there's tons of databases and maybe your company, if you're an aerospace company, has their own databases of airfoil designs. And um, they're usually laid out in just XYZ points. So, that's all that we're bringing into NTOP. So if I if I open this up, what's going on is I have this import points block, and that is pointing to a file, and it's uh, asking for some units, 
And um, I can go ahead and change this file and a new airfoil will be brought in. And this airfoil is actually being uh, pushed all the way into, um, yeah, it's, it's redoing everything, but it's, it's being pushed all the way through the notebook so that we'll get an entirely new shape um, and a new wind turbine design all based on this new, new uh, airfoil. So this kind of information, I have two examples in the file, sorry, in the folder of, of the points that define the, um, the blade. And you can see what it looks like here, um, the points. This is a key input. So I've actually uh, made this a file a input uh, for the whole notebook. So a user can go in and say, okay, I have a new um, blade design, so I'm just gonna go point to the, the points that, that define it. Um, and then just to finish out how this works, so this, these points uh, reference a, or, or are referenced to create a polygon. And um, just to be safe, we do this orient object block, which brings in the uh, blade profile to be centered at zero, 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 um, and perpendicular to the Z axis. So um, that way, if, if you have some shifting somewhere, um, once we start using this blade profile, we can make sure that it's centered at zero, zero, zero. And so orient object is useful for that. Um, we're taking the average of all the points as the source of the orientation, and we're moving it to uh, zero, zero, zero. So this orientation is, is a commonly used tool. It should be in the top. So uh, if you have questions on that, let me know. But uh, basically, we have this 2D profile. And now um, the key uh, block that we're going to use to um, create these designs is the twisted sweep profile. So you'll find that under modeling here, twisted sweep profile. And what this allows us to do is take a profile uh, like the blade design that we have here and take a curve and move the, the, the um, profile or, or sweep it up the curve. And uh, it, it has you choose a blade, uh, I'm sorry, a bind point. So we're just picking the, um, the center of the profile. Like the, it would be zero, zero, zero in this case because we um, oriented it at zero, zero, zero. Um, but basically, it's just going to move the, let's see if I can show this, uh, just here. It's going to move the, one moment, it's going to move the profile through the curve. And so the question is, how do we define these curves? Uh, and, th and that's what is cool about NTOP is all of these designs, all they are are just sweeping this um, airfoil with different curves. So this is a, a curve that's just a straight up and down. This is this vertical um, linear thing. This is a kind of oblong shape, and this is this helix. And so if we just go in and define points, um, so here we have one example. Uh, I'm going to hide this. But if we just define points that follow these curves, so you can see that here's A, B, C, and D, which is more 3D. Uh, so you'll. You'll have to see that in a second. But um, anyway, I, all I'm doing is changing out what the curve is, and I'm getting these different designs. So I can very quickly shift between these different designs uh, or any other design that might have a new curve. Uh, so let me just demonstrate that. Um, if I get rid of what's inside of this block, this is the definition of fin points. Uh, so, so the points that are used to define the curve that, that the uh, blades are, are um, swept through. So I'm going to right-click this and click Remove Contents. Uh, we, and, and you can see it's fin point D in there. But I'm going to drag in a new one. So I'm going to do fin point A. And I can do a duplicate of the block by just uh, control, holding Control and clicking and dragging. And now I've brought in fin points A, and I can view this. If I go like this, you see this is just straight up and down. Um, and now if I view the fin, let's take a second, let me change to low res. Yep, 
yeah, it'll take just a second, but it, once that views, we'll see that it is um, uh, from the A design of the paper, this one. Uh, another thing to note, uh, I mentioned this, this, this uh, rotation exists for only the D design, and that is done with the uh, twisted sweep profile block. So I have this option for submitting a starting and ending rotation. For all of the ABC designs, I don't need any rotation because that's just not what's called for. Uh, you can read more about that in this paper. You can see also there is a comparison here. The case D, uh, you see the blade shape. They're all straight except for case D, which is helical. Uh, so this is actually swept. We can see that. I'm just going to change this to 0. And it will just do a straight fin. Uh, and, and yeah, so you can go through and change these curves out and get any kind of uh, pattern that you want for the uh, orientation of these, of these blades. And um, it's not only creating one fin, right? That's what I'm showing with this block. But a couple other things are happening. First of all, we have an axis to find. Uh, and all of this, by the way, is set up parametrically. I'm not going to go through all of that, but you know, if I change any of these heights or radius of the axis or um, the um, the radius of the mount, all of these things will just update in the notebook. So um, you can see there's with the, things like this, we're referencing um, referencing variables at, that are at the top. Uh, but but anyway, let's let's not only create one fin. Uh, but let's also add a support structure that connects the fin to the uh, axis. And then let's also array the single fin into three fins with support structures all around. Uh, and this, again, takes a long time, especially if you want to have this parametric ability to, to go in and change things in regular CAD software. Here, we can do all this stuff super easily. Uh, so first, I'm going to talk about the creation of these supports. I have um, a Boolean union that's basically just bringing in three, three bodies. The first is the fin that we create that comes from this uh, twisted sweep profile. And then I have uh, two cylinders, one connecting the axis to the bottom of the fin, and another connecting the axis to the top of the fin. So how am I doing that? Well, let's look at these cylinders individually. Uh, I simply created a, a new body that is a cylinder from line segment. And the line segment is uh, the connection between two points. One of them is the, uh, it's from the properties of the axis block, so this cylinder block. So I can go in here and I can look under the properties tab. And there's actually an end point and a start point that are properties of this axis. So I can go in and drag these in here to be uh, points in the line segments that define my cylinder. Uh, so, so that's a really cool thing about the cylinder block is I can pull these, you know, even the radius also, but I can pull these values out, end point and start point, uh, and, and things, you know, information about the axis and all kinds of other useful stuff. Uh, so I am selecting the, let's, let's just look at this bottom line this bottom support structure. So I'm selecting the uh, you know, origin of the cylinder. That's this point. That's it, effectively you know, right, right here. And then I'm also selecting uh, this point here. So what is that point? Well, if I go back up to my fin points list, uh, I have a list of three points. These three points get uh, replaced with different uh, points lists that define the different kinds of profiles that are going to get swept through. Remember, we have the straight line for A, the uh, linear line for B. All of these are just brought into this variable, um, which is a, a fin points variable. Um, and I'm actually going in and using a list element block which says, okay, take this list and pull the pull one item out of it. 
and you, you'd specify an index. So zero is the first item. Uh, first, or one is the second item. Two is the la third item. And in this case, it's the last item. So now I've, I've gone into the spin points and I've pulled out the first point. You see this blue dot. And that gives me a um, cylinder that connects the axis and the fin, the bottom of the fin, because uh, it's the first point that defines the shape of the fin. Uh, similarly, I have the top uh, of the axis or the end point of the axis block. Uh, and that is getting connected to the uh, last point in fin points, this variable. And so that's always going to be where the fin ends, right? It's where the, the fin is going to be com uh, completing its journey of being swept. So, uh, and then I just apply a radius and that's a variable that, that is specified at the top, the support radius, so at one millimeter. And now if I view this, I have um, also a blend radius in between the fins and the um, supports. And now no matter what I do to my um, fins, they're always gonna have this connection that automatically connects it in a straight line from the axis to the, um, to the, the top and bottom of the blades. And uh, the last step is to just take that and array it um, with three instances allow, around the central axis. So that, that should be fairly straightforward, just a polar array. Um, the rendering can be a little strange on this. I have a little note here about that. Um, so just do one more union with the axis so that we have the single body. See, the rendering can be a little strange, so it just comes with the territory of implicit modeling and using this swept array. But don't, uh, you know, fear not, because if we if we do a um, high-res render by selecting Control-H, we'll see that the, the fins are defined very precisely. And um, yeah, so, so to reiterate what we've done here is we have um, three different sets of points that we manually inputted to specify um, how the fin will be arrayed in space. Um, so you can see some different, uh, or I should say swept in space. So the, the, the 2D profile is getting swept through. And um, we, we pick one of these points lists and drag them into this variable, which is referenced a bunch of times in this, these next couple of blocks. Uh, and so a curve is created, the axis is created, a single fin uh, is swept along the curve that we've selected from the points we've selected. And then uh, we automatically add supports that connect the axis to the fin. And we array that in uh, three iterations around the central axis. And that's really it. Um, I'll go through what some of the options look like and how easy it is uh, in practice to switch switch them around. I have this mount block as well, or this this mount cylinder, um, just so you get a, a clear picture of how this is designed. Again, uh, it may be good to view this with Control H just to double check that everything looks okay. Uh, that's a little far far away, so something like that, and. Um, I think I'll pause for questions and then we'll, we'll briefly go over meshing this and getting it into Fluent. Um, let me think if I've missed anything. Oh yeah, I was just gonna demonstrate real quick like how easy it is to replace, let's say, you know, I wanna replace this design or this design with this with, I wanna replace A with B. So I'm just going to um, Right click here, select remove contents. I don't need that block anymore. I'm gonna select my fin points B list, hold control, drag it in. And I've already begun to populate all of the information needed. And if I look, I have this design. Um, and like I said, rendering can be a little strange there. I'm on low res. Uh, it's just because it's very thin in that region. But if I, to control H, do a high res render. 
excuse me, uh, everything should look fine. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, let's get into questions and then check for um, check for time. See if we can do a uh, export to Fluent demo. So one one second. Depending on the results from Fluent, how best to embody any enhancement for greater harvesting? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I mean, the what I've read about this uh, Fluent, uh, or what I've read about this vertical axis wind uh, turbine design is that it is really a complex um, thing. And there's a lot of models. There's a lot of information that you can read about this stuff. The, there's kind of a its own finite element analysis that you can do called BEM, which I think stands for blade element momentum models. Um, so I don't think I'd, I'd be like the person to ask about what to do. But what you can do uh, is if you if you go into Fluent and you have some kind of, um, uh, like let's say for example, you're happy with the amount of torque that's being generated after you calculate that from CFD and Fluent, but you're seeing that there's too much drag along the supports. Um, what you could do is you could you could calculate a field uh, from Fluent. So export a field uh, of, of 3D defined space of where there is a lot of drag. And then you could come in here and you could try to um, try to lattice these uh, supports so that there there is less drag in them. Um, or, or think of a way to design uh, with the field as the input where you're saying, okay, there's a lot of drag here, so I need to perforate these regions. But there, I know that there's a lot of stress here, so I need to leave this thick. And all of that could be driven from a field. Um, and that's true for all, all of, um, that's true for all of NTOP, right? Like using simulation to create a field. Uh, and, and when I say field, I mean a uh, some kind of value like drag or stress or temperature that's defined in, in in 3D space, right? You can import that back into NTOP and, and drive your design based on that. Um, so, so I would say, you know, use, use CFD, use, use other kinds of analysis to drive uh, design decisions in NTOP. And that's kind of a, a story for another day. This is just how to make cool parametric models today. But um, you can do that and you can, you can um, the, the key step there, and we have plenty of documentation on this online, is to use uh, import point map, where either a scalar or vector value can be brought in, and it can have any units and basically, you know, an x, y, z position and some kind of piece of data associated with it. So you can build these 3D maps of, of information like stress and drag and temperature, et cetera. Um, I think... That's the only question. Let's see. Would there be a way to define the geometry of the profile without getting CSV files that could be evaluated within NTOP that inputted and that inputted for the design? Um, let me read that again. Yeah, so there's other ways to bring in these um, uh, Blades. I, I, I believe you're talking about this geometry. Uh, hold on one sec. This geometry. Uh, yeah, I I used in this example CSVs because that really is an industry thing to to bring in the um, curve definitions. You know, usually it's like a spline definition. So this is not quite that, but. Um, yeah, you can bring in blades, and there's whole databases of airfoil blades um, that you can you can get in a CSV format. If you didn't want to do that, um, you can bring in any kind of other import that we have geometrically from NTOP. So uh, meshes, CAD files, um, you know, voxel grids for whatever whatever you have. You can you can bring that in, and then just do a section cut, or, or a, you know, a section. Uh, to get a profile of a blade, um, and then you could work from there. So uh, the answer is yes. There's there's plenty of ways to define this geometry to, to start it out, um, and any number of of, of uh, methods could could get you to this first step where you have a 
uh, airfoil design that will then be swept around all over the place. Um, OK. Check for the other question. I think I got all the questions out of the way. Um, so I'll just talk briefly about, mo about meshing this and getting it out to NTOP. I'm sorry, getting it out to Fluent. So let's say we have this as our final kind of design. Um, it's going to be a little tricky to mesh this. And that's because there are really, really thin, like we saw rendering things, the, these fins get really thin at the edge. And that's why we see these little like spikes. They're not actually um, present if you do a high res render. But um, what we do need to do when we mesh this is try to discretize that uh, thickness a little bit, or that that thinness a little bit, I should say. And so I'm before I'm doing any uh, discretization in a, in a mesh format, I'm creating a voxel grid. So a voxel grid is just a good way to like tame your your crazy implicits so that they're ready for discretization or meshing. Um, it's like it's a it's a good first step when everything else was give is giving you trouble, and it doesn't take too long. Um, it's pretty fast with our engine. So, so I, I create a voxel grid with just a really small voxel size. And then I, I do a mesh from voxel grid. You can see um, it's also really uh, fine mesh. Uh, and then I remesh that to a larger mesh size, but it does know when to become finer mesh when needed. Um, then you could go smaller even than this uh, for your simulation, whatever it's called for. Uh, but again, voxel grid goes into mesh from voxel grid, uh, remesh that, and then create a volume mesh uh, here. This should look the same, but we can see inside there's uh, elements here. And then uh, we'll just designate this as a FE volume mesh, which doesn't geometrically mean anything different, but it just prepares it for FEA. And uh, a much simpler meshing process is to just mesh the um, mount because it's just a cylinder. So I used this uh, shortcut as just FE implicit solid mesh. You just put in an implicit, give some feature size values, and it creates a mesh ready to go. Uh, but these are the same data type. You can see they have the same icons. And um, when I create a model, I'm going to have two components in it. I have the uh, the top component, which has this you know really coarse mesh for this uh, De, uh, uh, very detailed definition geometrically of the fins. Uh, and then I have this mount component. And they're both just um, FE solid components, meaning they're, they're uh, specifying you know, solid FE mesh elements and a material property. So you can hear, here, here's the mesh here. I used this material aluminum here. And the same goes for the um, second solid component. For the mount, so here's the the mesh, and then here's the material, um, and then I I'm creating a connector that connects these two components. So here the, the two components are shown, and then this connecting uh, component specifies my nodes on the top and bottom half, or the the rotating nodes and the solid nodes, or I should say you know fixed nodes, and. Uh, it looks for where they're close enough to create a um, connection between the two. So that's where in your simulation, you might specify that like rotation is allowed, but then other forces can be transferred. Because this will have to, you know, however you want to set up your CFD, this will have to rotate. Um, so you can always change how these things are set up. This is just kind of a template. Uh, and then I'm not going to run simulation in NTOP. I just build the FE model and then export it. So the next block is a. Um, export FE model. And I just specify what the model is that I just created. I give it a, a file path. So I'm creating a .msh file uh, on my desktop. I think it's already there, a model.msh. And give it a unit system that just follows everything I've been working on. And then um, I'm also going to tell Fluent that I have these specific sets of nodes that are going to be important to uh, distinguish from each other. You don't want to just bring in the whole mesh. You, you might need, you might want to say where things have been picked out for specific boundary conditions, 
uh, or or you know constraints in general like maybe this the solid is going to be the, the mount is going to be fixed the top's going to be free to rotate or experience the wind forces and blah 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 so so this set list allows me to, to drag these in here and keep them selected um, and I'm, I'm doing that by selecting them by their body so these blocks the fe boundary by body it says take a look at this mesh select any node that's close to this body uh, which is this body right here right uh, in other words select all the nodes right if i wanted to only select a subset i could put a different body in here but i'm just putting in the uh the whole basically the whole geometry that defines this mesh and i do the same for the mount right we have the mount mesh and we have the mount body and you can see those here um oops so that all is going into a file. And I'm not going to do a Fluent demo, but I'm just going to show it being brought in. All I did was just open Fluent and open this file, which again is a .msh. And um, you can see that there's two different regions here. Um, again, I'm not going to go through all the steps that would be needed to run a simulation of Fluent on this, but you could see the um possibility of running whatever simulation getting some kind of information out to either uh, say okay hey this is the best design out of the four or taking the information that you get from a design and then feeding it back into ntop and say like here's the um you know from this design here's where i see a lot of drag on the supports so i'm going to lattice this i'm going to i'm going to thin this out or thicken this out so that um and get the best ratio of power generation to weight and, and uh, reduce drag and things like that. Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to cover. I'm going to check for questions again. And uh, I don't think I have any new ones. Check the chat. Yep, OK. Well, if that's it, uh, thank you guys so much for, oh, something came in. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, I hope this was interesting, even if you're not a turbine designer. Uh, there's a lot of lessons in this, and uh, you should be able to access the files um, uh, one way or the other. One way or the other. Uh, if you can't, you can email me at blakejohnson at entopology.com, and I'll get you set up with this paper and the um, all the files you see here. And um, we should have a link somewhere with the files as well. So uh, yeah. Um, Good luck out there, and um, and thanks for tuning in. I will. Uh, I'll catch you later.